Well, not, but we're the last league on your tour. Before you head over to Barbary tonight for your uh, network event, where you can carry on your conversations. My name is Andrew Morrow. I'm the general manager of uh, food and beverage development and operations with Roya International. Roya International is a 20-year-old company, uh, self-started by Ahmed Ramdan in the region to assist hotels and F&B operations uh, start up in this region when it was absolutely crucial that you had local knowledge. 20 years later, we're now a multifaceted company that offers consultancy, design, uh, project management, and obviously F&B consultancy and operations as well. However, we're in Latte today. Latte is Roya's latest concept. Uh, the story of Latte really begins in 1993 with the development of the Fondazione Altagama, which is a foundation called Altagama in Italy, which is a collaboration of all the top lifestyle, F&B, jewellery, automotive brands of Italy. Uh, if you know a high-end Italian name, it's probably a member. Versace, Ferrari, Fendi, uh, Ducati, and many more. Altagama about five years ago, decided to, well, several partners, I should say, of Altagama, mainly in the F&B spectrum, decided to develop an F&B offering in Milan, uh, which turned out to be Latte. That offering was designed and developed around the showcasing of Altagama products, whether it be furniture, whether it be food, so on and so forth. So some of our partners, if you look up, the panels above you carry the names of the initial 12 founding partners of Latte. We have Cardel Bosco, fantastic uh, vineyard and winery in Italy. We have Pantene Ferrari, again, very well known for their sparkling wines. San Pellegrino, I'm sure you all know very well. Illy Coffee, Alessi, and, and so on. Two years ago, two and a half years ago, we acquired the rights of the master franchise for Illy Cafe uh, in the MENA region. During the development talks of us acquiring those rights, the, the option of latte came up. So actually, this project has been on our mind for almost two and a half years. Uh, and we chose D3 mainly because it's very symbolic. The nature of D3 is symbolic of the brand being design, food and beverage, and an alternative luxury lifestyle uh, offering, which is what D3 is all about. So we opened here on the let's say the second week of November, I think the actual date's a bit more uh, We actually opened in, uh, in line with the uh, Dubai Design Week. So that was a very large launch for us. For us. Um, D3 itself was very, very busy, and we had uh, a massive launch, which was great for our uh, pre-opening marketing. We got a lot of footfall through the restaurant, and that gave us a good launching pad uh, into the Dubai market. Uh, the concept really is threefold. Uh, and this is both in Milan, here, and our sister restaurant in Abu Dhabi, which also opened about three or four months ago. Those three folders, we've got a cafe, which you'll see at the front where you came in. This is the quick service element. You can come in, you can grab a panini, an espresso at the bar, you can be in and out in 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, very well priced for that convenient takeaway or dine-in option. Where we're sitting at the moment is the restaurant part, which obviously is slightly higher end, works lunch and dinner, uh, and offers a modern interpretation of Italian cuisine. We've been open four months, and during that four months, we changed the menu once or twice, and we're just finding our feet in the market. But it's, uh, it's been a good start for us. We've really made ourselves known in the D3 area, and uh, we capture quite a good lunch traffic. Our biggest problem at the moment, given the location of D3 in Dubai, is our, is our dinner traffic. So, we're working on developing that for the future.